and it is next time. Woo, next time. Last time I had a grand and glorious battle to ruins and claim treasure for Spain. This time No, no, you you wanna you wanna you wanna play? Let's have an encounter. The swamp encounter. Traveling through the swamps, your people struggling not to get stuck in the mud, you catch a glimpse of movement between the dead leafless trees ahead. Let's scout out the area ahead. You send a few troops ahead to the muck. The soft ground helps to dampen their footsteps, and they soon return safely and undiscovered. It looks like a small group of tribals, maybe a hunting party, but they have several warriors with them, and one of them looks like a shaman. We counted three warriors, two trappers, and a shaman. They're equipped for battle, but not very well. And if it all draws her weapon. Doesn't sound like they pose a problem in a straight fight. They might cause some trouble if they follow us and fall on our backs. We'd best kill them now to eliminate any possible threat in the future. Isabella throws her hands up. What a typical thing for you to say, Anna. Always trying to solve every problem with violence. Let's just avoid them. They clearly don't pose any real threat to us. Let's change our course to avoid trouble. Cool. Wanted to see if they would be a problem. And uh, does not seem like that would be the case. But I would like to finish mapping out the rest of this. So you guys go on your own way. You can do that. You can go your own way. Uh-huh. That's why I wanted to to turn around. There we go. I want that. Hopefully we don't get any trouble from them. If we do, I would be distraught. A lot of our difficulties there are pretty high. This marshland is unfriendly. Hello. I don't want to fight them. I really don't. You guys go about your business hunting. It's it's not necessary for me to attack you, and I don't feel like it. So, you keep doing what you're doing. Hello? No. This is gonna be fun, everyone. Maybe they're just really interested in us and what we're doing here. You know, they just want to observe. You know, I obviously wanted to map out some stuff because it didn't look like I had been around here. Okay, we can consolidate our maps of the swamp. Let's go ahead and do that. Also, you guys. I want lanterns. Give me lanterns. I haven't had any lanterns to play with in a long while. And while I'm sure my viewers have been happy with this because it almost feels like cheating, some of them said. Look, I put the AI at maximum intelligence. Hello again. Look, I'm tempted to kill you guys just so I don't see that event constantly pop up. Leave me alone. <laughs> Oh, man. So, we fully consolidated the swamp, so I guess we can leave this area. At the same time, there might be more prizes out there. Who can say? Let's, uh, let's auto-assign everyone again. Carlos, uh... Oh, well, let's actually, uh, get to work on these axes and pickaxes. How about... Nightmares. A scream from one of the tents adjacent to yours awakes you in the middle of the night. Light footsteps patter through the grass as a few of your people leave their tents to see what's going on. Let's get the noise. You quickly get dressed, light a lantern, <laughs> see it's a good thing we made one of those, and step outside to see what's going on. The flaps to Gabriela Yabara's tent are open and you can hear the voice of Isabella Runes comforting the hunter. It's alright. You just had a bad dream. You're safe. You're safe, Gabriela. Everything is alright. What's wrong? Isabella Urenez is holding Gabriella, comforting embrace, stroking her head and shushing you. Uh, shushing as you would a small child. Gabriella is frowning deeply, staring emptily into the middle distance. She's been crying in her sleep, but she's quiet now. She looks up at you. Sorry, Capitan. Are you alright? She nods stoically. It was just a nightmare. Do you want to talk about it? The hunter shakes her head. Leave them alone. More sniffling emanates from Gabriella's tent, but it sounds like Isabella has managed to calm the hunter down. No more conversation follows, and soon after you hear Isabella get up to leave the tent. Just go to bed, then. <laughs> Good event, everyone. Ah. 
all these sorts of like random events to uh, you know just continue to pique your interest and keep you invested in the characters make them seem you know like real people okay we have ourselves a oh treasure I saw the I saw you treasure yes I did I know you're real ah we had meat that spoiled during the night ah well we used it to propitiate the gods. I, I mean the god. Not not the god. I mean singular. Singular god. Singular. Totally singular. I haven't been corrupted by my wife or anything. Totally singular god. Yep, that's exactly what I meant. <laughs> <laughs> you know, now that I'm thinking about it, speaking of which, wife, you deserve a promotion. You deserve night vision. Poison Sting makes a range attack that applies a small damage over time effect on the hit. I'll tell you what, instead of that, we'll get, uh... Well, we can't even grab walk your shots yet. Okay. A blowgun. Very high critical short range. She already has the ability to use a bow. I don't think we'll invest in that. Keen eye. Now let's go ahead and get a uh, night vision then. And make her a better hunter, and she's gained morale. Sweet. Isabella there's not doing that well on the morale front. She's kind of, you know, peaceful and cautious and open-minded. But other than that, I mean, Carlos there is not doing that well, too, but he's cautious. Bunch of cautious pussies. <laughs> well, what did I do? Don't do that. Keep going to work here. And let's try to give these people extra food. See if maybe that will that will brighten their outlook here. Unused meat. Uh we'll feed uh my lovey dovey honey bunny. <laughs> we'll just go from there. Ah oh, well, I tried. I invested thought and effort into doing that, and that thought and effort was not rewarded. I tried to care about them. I tried. Alright, we got some herbs here. Looks like there's also some treasure there, but we don't really have a convenient way to get to that. Let's make sure that all food is auto-assigned now. Eleven meat and two rations. Oof. It's rough. And you, herbalism. We gotta get out of this marsh area here. This is, uh... It's pretty difficult on the whole patrolling thing. We're not doing so great on finding patrols like we used to. Well, finding things with our patrols like we used to. I need to get one of these scholars up to having ten tinkers so that I can, uh... Fully... Explore the whole wonders of things. <laughs> the technical term for it. We have some preserving to do. You guys are fully handling that. Uh, I'll just feed people to meat again. To meat. To meat. To meat. To meat. We still have a lot of rations to spare, which is nice. Charge the roads. Oh boy. This place is so vast. It's incredible. Check out this music playing in my ears. It's wonderful. Incredible and wonderful. What a treat to explore. We choose the road not taken. We choose Robert Frost. Okay. Um, you get back to hunting. Auto assign again. And... Yeah. Go ahead and go with that. Only 11 meat. Ah, well. See what's inside that crate. 
the crate of prizes, which is what I was going for. Oh, sweet, more treasure. I love treasure. And I would do anything for treasure. <laughs> we're a lot more open-ended in uh, where we can go here in this particular area, too. Since we're not uh, limited by the governor. The governor douchebag. To me? Alright. Try to get Isabella's uh, morale up very slowly. 18 meat. Now that's nice. Getting lots of spare meat. Mr. Potsdam would be pleased. Hello. A grave. What a grave occurrence. Oh. 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 <laughs> think uh, we're on 22 here? I think so. Grave. Grave. A heavy tombstone marks a gravesite. The marker is well constructed from sturdy materials, but is inelegant. The text is chiseled with no sense of beauty, but is clearly readable. Dig up the grave. Exhume the buried corpse. The skull is encrusted with gold and studded with crystals. I expected that uh, the pious followers would uh, crucify me. Tell me how I was a horrible person. But I guess that didn't happen. Let's auto assign here. And then to meet, to meet. To me, to me, to me. Yay! Rita gained morale from getting extra food. At least someone did. Although we only got five meat with this next one, which is unfortunate. Disconcerting, even. A cave? You know, I am enjoying my thorough ex exploration of crazy things, but cave... Now that sounds interesting. That sounds like excitement there. There it is! I guess I should have popped in there before I went after the valuables. Oh well. Go ahead and auto assign the food again. And explore nearby caverns. Higher patrolling skill and your own scouting skill. Caves may be dangerous. Anna. Go. Anna Vidal returns empty-handed. Of course she does. <sighs> Your expedition is passing by a cave when Bernardo Trevino shouts for everyone to halt. The soldier has noticed a large assortment of human bones distributed around the entrance of the cave. Let's examine the cave entrance. A set of very large animal tracks are visible everywhere around the cave entrance. You know enough about hunting to identify the tracks as feline, though it appears to be a remarkably large specimen. Gabriella uh, stares at the animal's tracks in the mud with stars in her eyes. That is an enormous animal. Whatever creature left these prints, we should make every effort to capture it alive, Captain. Let's set up a net trap at the cave entrance. Your cautious followers are game morale. You personally set up a net trap in front of the cave, centered over the place where the tracks are most numerous. Then you place a little meat under the trap for good distance, good measure, and withdraw to a safe distance. You don't have to wait long before a huge shape comes in the view out of the cave opening. What must be the world's largest jaguar prowls slowly out of the dark cave. It stops just before reaching your trap, sniffing the air suspiciously. Next to you, a few of your people can be heard swearing under their breaths. And the beast takes a few more steps forward towards the bait, and the trap is sprung. The sturdy net falls from the top of the cave entrance and perfectly catches the giant jaguar. Your troops rush forward to hold down the corners of the net as the beast struggles to free itself. For half an hour, your people fight to hold down the creature before it finally gives up and rolls over, exhausted from the struggle. You immediately have your rather worried-looking servants tied up and bring it to the carts. You shall have them construct a cage for it when you make camp the night. We've gained experience, and we have what must be the biggest jaguar in existence, according to the flavor text. All right. Man, I hope that doesn't come back to bite us in the ass. We could probably use some more medicine. How much medicine do we have? 261? Hmm. You know what? Fine. Let's go ahead and get it anyway. 
And every little bit helps. I think I'm going to save the game again for no reason. It's not that I have a giant jaguar or anything at all, no. No. Okay, they're, they're going to take care of that construction automatically. Good, 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 good. Oops. There we go. Keep working at it, guys. Now, the reason why I'm not having them work on the, uh, the tent and the wagon is because the text said that apparently you need Tinker of 10 to get that maxed out. So, you know, we'll get that. Oh, we have ourselves a giant jaguar, everyone. Excitement. Celebration. Romance. Hmm. We got some valuables. That's nice. Let's, uh, let's go after this thing. This point of interest, which will probably be a chart the roads marker. It is. Nice. Of course, I kind of skipped traveling along the roads there, but whatever. We'll save that place for later. Not in too much of a rush. <laughs> Oops, I'm on the road. Shit. It's going to be very hard for me to guard the camp on the road. Ah, well. Oh, thankfully the expedition held up. That's nice. And some meat spoiled. I'm not used to getting, you know, such wild fluctuations of meat. It's kind of weird. Alright! Before we go bebopping along in here, let's go ahead and save. Again. Just in case there's anything I want to reload and re-experience. Hello! How's it going? How y'all doing? Zalapa Palace. Now, uh, the Spanish pronunciations I have a hard enough time with. I'm not so sure I'm going to be able to do Yucatan pronunciations, everyone. In a large, serene valley, covered in lush vegetation, you discover the city of Salapa. The citizens you encounter on the way towards the city proper are all remarkably polite, though they do stare quite a bit, as one might expect. Eventually, you meet a small patron of war patrol warriors who re request your permission to take you to Salapa's chieftain, Tepic Tokdon. Um, we're gonna call him, we're gonna give him a nickname, we're gonna give him Old Tepe. There we go. You are taken through the, uh, the city to a large house of multiple rooms. Not quite a palace, but certainly built for a similar purpose. On a stool in a large room just past the entrance is a man in his late thirties. He is not dressed in any way that might set him apart from anyone else in the city, but something about his demeanor signals power and authority. The chieftain stands as you enter, takes one step towards you, and addresses you in what sounds like a somewhat humorous and rather irreverent tone. The young woman next to him translates his words into impeccable Spanish. Well, another group of white people has come across the seas, shining like silver statuettes. Don't bother pretending to be gods, my people won't fall for that twice. And I never did. As you will preemptively foil my plans, I shall simply introduce myself. I am Grimith Reaper. I take it you are the chieftain, Tepi? He looks around the room in a theatrical manner. Alas, for lack of a wiser, more well-behaved chieftain, I am all Zalaba has got. Welcome to my city, Grimith Reaper. I take it your attentions are peaceful since our conversation has not been cut short by the thunder from your weapons. Tepi absolutely butchers your name. Gramth Rapper. <laughs> So he butchers it like all of the people of the internet butcher it, right? Gram... Well, it's good. I'd butcher his name, too. Tapic Toton. Cool, we're in the same boat. He absolutely butchers it, but the interpreter pronounces it perfectly in the translation. It seems my predecessor has left you with a bad impression of my people. The chieftain smirks. I will attempt not to let my bias poison our dealings. Now tell me, how can our peaceful settlement accommodate you and your people? Will you tell me about your people and your city? Your open-minded followers have gained morale. And uh, Tappy scratches his chin. Is this genuine interest or diplomatic politeness? Genuine interest, I assure you. 
Well, it is a topic dear to my heart, and there is much to say, but I shall present you with the short version. We are the Totonac, and Zalapa is our greatest city. Here we are about 120,000 people. We've been subjects of the Aztec Empire since my father was chief in the Zalapa. Though they show no interest in the well-being of our province, though... Okay, I get it. Though they show no interest in the well-being of our province, though they impose their laws on my people without any understanding the conditions we face, we remain ever loyal to Tenochtitlan. Ah, I might have to look up the pronunciation of that again. It's been a while since I've had to say it. Uh... You sound like you could use an ally, as luck would have it, I am seeking allies myself. Allies, you say? Hmm. He leans a little to the side and just line is thrown, and you are reminded of a magpie eyeing a fruit, fruit that has landed slightly too close to a cat. Yes, perhaps we should discuss a mutually beneficial arrangement. What would be the nature of this arrangement? I am looking to rid myself of the influence of an empire. I've been working on this matter for quite some time, but your people present a unique opportunity to hasten the process. First and foremost, I must unite the Tartanak peoples under my leadership. This is the problem I have most recently stumbled over, as the Totonac have only ever been ruled by their own individual chieftains. There is an idol once possessed by my father. It is held to be holy by our shamans, and though my father never exploited its political power, I am certain I could make better use of it if I could reclaim it. Only he lost it to another chieftain in battle many years ago. I see where this is going. It will not be the sort of problem that I'd sound like. The chief who took the idol of my father recently passed away. He had no heir, but unfortunately his tribe still refuses to give up the idol. You could convince them to. I'm sure I could persuade them to relinquish the idol. He eyes your weapon with concern, but says nothing. I trust that you will not act recklessly in this matter. That said, as long as you return to me with the idol in hand, I may forgive any indiscretion. Good luck, Spaniard. The chieftain's young translator gives you a peculiar look when you leave. Oh boy. Well, let's pop in and say hello. Zalapa's market is a fairly is fairly large and seems to be well stocked with a variety wide variety of goods from the surrounding farmland and other Totonac towns. A group of artisans in the corner is selling items for the trappers and seem willing to sell to you as well if you'll pay the price. Go ahead and trade. Let's see what's happening here. They don't they're not exactly uh, having a crazy demand for equipment. And to be fair, we don't exactly need a whole lot of equipment. Let's go ahead and grab some, though. That will be sufficient. Just to, Just for some extra replacements of things. We'll be fine. Browse the trapper's items. Let's, uh, let's try to haggle. Drive a hard bargain. Ah, damn. Well, let's get, uh... Go ahead and get two nut traps and two spike traps, because those prove to be useful. And we have the valuables, certainly, to spare. I'm going to hoard the valuables just in case something else crops up that I really want. Uh, nut and spike traps, though. Definitely a big fan of those. As a matter of fact, here we go. Oh, five spike traps. Oh, yeah. This is the good stuff here. There's, You know, it doesn't matter. It, it seriously doesn't. Look, 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 look where we are. Look where we, I guess, you know, it's trying to go after an angle to get to this thing. In which case, we'll just wait for that. Let's just go ahead and uh, explore around here. The curse. You let your people explore Zalapa by themselves. It's fairly charming for such a large city. It seems to be well off, and its people are friendly once they get over their initial fear of the unfamiliar. When you just about feel like you familiarized yourself with the place, a commotion near one of the elders' huts alerts you that one of your people has transgressed in some way against the locals. Oh dear. Tayana is standing half naked. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> what is this? Let's try this again. Tayana is standing. You know, Tayana, your precious, beloved, adventurous wife, is standing half-naked in front of one of the local elders who is shouting and screaming in very upset tones at the trapper. Capita! 
Sure, maybe she's taken to calling me Capitan. Help me calm this crazy lady down, she's out of her mind. What's happened? Where are your clothes? She blushes a little. <laughs> this has to be a bug, right? Right? Like, what? Why? Why is? Why? Why is this happening with, with a a native woman we recruited from one of the villages, by getting her to marry me, and one of the ways that she judges me is through my fidelity to her. Yeah, the whole tone and manner of speech really makes it seem as if this this event is befitting someone else. And it happening to Tiana here is just... I mean, mad old hag, you really shouldn't get involved in natives. Like, that's not an appropriate thing to say to her. She is a native. I can't really say that to her. What, what it was better to say is, I thought we were going, you know, maybe they have different cultures and customs, right? I, um, I, I may have fooled around a little with this lady's son. Like, Anna, I'd understand that. But you, come on. He was fully on board with the whole thing, I assure you. This mad old hag will hear none of it, though. That's the other thing, too. Like, we're not needing a translator to talk to her. She's actually just being able to talk to us straight up. Like, she learned Spanish that fast? Really? Well, I'm not going to load to, to see, you know, if we can get someone more appropriate. We'll play along here. Uh, we'll collect your clothes and let's get out of here. At once, senor, but please, she says she's put a curse on me. Can you get her to take it back? Let's try to reason with the old woman. You argue... Okay, peaceful followers gain around, aggressive and pious followers have lost it. You argue, haggle, pester, and threaten for hours, and eventually does help a little. With assurances from her child that it was all completely consensual, and appeals from her fellow elders to forgive the poor trapper for her all-too-human impulses, the old woman grudgingly revokes her curse, and you all part amicably. As the day comes to a close and Tiana is still in good health, you're relieved to conclude that the curse, if there ever was one, must indeed be gone. What the hell was that? Well, I'm going to take this as complete and total carte blanche license to do whatever the hell I want now. The game might be, you might be like, you're cheating on me. I'm like, mm hmm, mm hmm. Yeah. <laughs> See, the only reason why I'm applying, you know, thoughts and customs from my time was because I, I read this, but apparently she doesn't subscribe to those, so I'm going to do as she does. It would be the best way to understand her. Verdad? Oh my goodness. Well, we're gonna save so we can lock that in. That that was a thing that transpired. That we all had that moment together. <laughs> ah, amusing. Nope. Anacaona. Anacaona? Returning to your caravan on the outskirts of Zalapa, a girl of about 14 or 15 years of age, oh god, stops you on the road. You recognize her as the young woman who translated the chieftain Tepe's words into flawless Spanish. Excuse me. Excuse me, senorita. I wish to make a re The only voice I could do for her is an absurd kid voice. Like the little kid in Espanol who was actually a teenager. Well, hopefully we won't have to deal with her very long. Excuse me, Senor Ripa. I wish to make a request of you. You're the chieftain translator, aren't you? What's your name? There are no pauses in the girl's speech. She is talking much faster now than when she was translated for Tepi. My name is Anacuna. Yes, you made me in the throne room. I want to ask if I can come with you, please. It would mean a lot to me if you would let me. Uh, uh, <laughs> maybe the little voice is fitting. Uh, how did you learn to speak Spanish so well? Uncle Miguel taught me, well, he's not my real uncle, but he might as well be family. But he left a few months ago because he thought it was dangerous to stay in Zalapa. He came with Cousin Capitan Gutierrez, but stayed behind when his expedition left because he liked it here. And, and he taught me lots of things about Spain and Europe and to understand and speak Spanish so I could translate it for father. Father? That big dog Don is my father. Uh, where do you seek to leave Zalapa? 
The girl takes a deep breath, and you steal yourself for yet another onslaught of words. I just want to experience adventure like you are Uncle Miguel, and I hate, hate the idea of staying in this stupid city and spending my entire life here with whatever overwinds my hand in marriage. I know lots of girls my age just want to find a boy, but I want to explore and see new places and make new people have fun. I'm not sure. Think about how useful it could be to have me with you. I'm much better at Spanish than anybody else you'll meet. I promise I can translate for you. And I've heard, learned about the Olmec and the Toltec. And I can be the Oculus. And, and I'm a chieftain's daughter. I'm a diplomatic asset, right? Wouldn't your father be angry if I took you with me? She shakes her head vigorously. Nope! <laughs> 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 oh, what the hell? Oh, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Then she nods quietly. Well, maybe. I mean, as warriors, we'd have to do something. I think that's a rule. Uh, <laughs> Hmm. Uh, feel as if this is an important decision. Uh, well, you know, I haven't rejected anyone for being able to join the crew just yet. Uh, uh. Well, <laughs> I'm sure you'll get over it eventually. Anna, I'm calling you Anna. Anna makes two small jumps and then throws herself at you, hugging you. Your people are staring at the both of you like they can't believe she's for real. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm ready to leave whenever I don't really have anything that I need to bring. Thank you. You decide to take a different way out of the village to avoid the Totenak warrior standing watch. No sooner have you lost sight of the village than a ruckus behind you announces the discovery of Anna's abduction. Your expedition is forced to flee the premises with arrows and spears raining down around them. You will not have time to repair. Oh my dear God, what have I done? Alejandro, you don't need that. Isabella, we need you. All right. Okay. I mean, Alejandro, you were useful and all, but uh, see, not improving accuracy there at all. Factual evidence. Okay, um, well, huh, that was, that was very energetic, all that energy I expended there. Okay. Get everybody to an escape zone. Perhaps I should have picked high mo this might be the first one I lose. Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my goodness. What have I done? A champion? A man-at-arms champion? I Hell if I know. That sounds pretty menacing, though. Okay, I can do this. So long as other people don't spawn on this map, I can do this. So long as other people don't spawn on this map, I can do this. I only have one dock here, but we'll be fine. Oh my god, this music.
That gave me goosebumps. I gotta turn that down. That's too addictive. That'll be distracting to me. I'll listen to that soundtrack in my own time. Look, you will get the volume 50. This is going to aggravate me. We're gonna try again. Oh, I had it! There we go. Man, this music. Okay. I am, I am sufficiently inspired here. My goodness. Let's do this then. Having a ranged guy uh, may very well have uh, proven to be more beneficial for me. Faint. Take out this champion. Who is a champion of things. And you're definitely not going to be able to reach. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. It's fine. Let's go ahead and see if I can soften them up with range attacks. Good job, Bernardo. Doing great. Ah, Anna would so close to getting there. Oh well. Let's go ahead and put Anna in a position for flank. See if I can actually maybe weaken him down even more. Good job, Rita. Fucking fantastic. Do you have any angle at all? You do. Yes! Yes! Fuck you! Oh, that was awesome! Oh, I loved that! That was great! This is so rare, these moments for me! 18%? <laughs> ah, damn. I was hoping I could ride the wave. I'm cool with that. Oh! Wasn't expecting that. Oh wow, that's a lot of range there. I actually thought the warrior might come close to me, and that was a mistake on my part, it seems. They've uh, they've got some serious range on me. Well, I'm gonna take care of your ass. Like, shooting other people, it's fine. Shooting Pedro, that's a big deal. I can't heal Pedro, because he can't heal himself. If Pedro goes down, we're, uh, we're gonna have a far more dangerous situation on our hands here. That is unacceptable. I hope there aren't traps in town that we have to worry about. Okay. It might be more worthwhile to just, like, try to charge these guys than, uh, do a mate, than, uh, try to do range attacks against them. I mean, my, my odds for hitting are not protect, uh, spectacular, rather. I think with you, I definitely want to charge. Same time, I don't want to get too far ahead of my, uh, my scouts here. So we'll try to take our shots, our percentages, our lumps, and see where the road takes us. I did get lucky and take down that guy. Just don't want to get too far ahead of everyone. You can swap your weapon back for your sword and board. And, uh... I'll actually have you take your shot back here before I move you, Pedro. Nice job! Fucking Pedro, man. He's kicking ass. And you're gonna seek cover. Okay, let's go. A lot of ranged people here. My major concern would be uh, seeing people uh, spawn, you know, all over us to smother us. Ah! Fuck! Forgot how much of a screw job this game could be with its critical hits. 
That is, that is, that is gross. She's poisoned. Let's go ahead and cure that, so that the poison doesn't deal extra damage. And I probably shouldn't try to play against these guys in a range fight. It's too risky. They're better at it than I am. Okay. That being said, we'll, we'll, we'll give it a spin. Damn. Without an interruption, but you guys got to enjoy the music. Professional at work here. Let's go ahead and, uh... We'll take another shot. There we go. Perhaps I should have just charged him outright, so... Wouldn't have to worry about the situation, but, uh... Anna's probably not gonna be able to do that, no. And neither is Pedro. But Anna can get pretty far. Thanks to our amazing powers. We've taken out two of them. We haven't lost anyone yet. And I definitely want to get everyone to an escape zone. Maybe failure to do so means leaving people behind to die. I don't like the thought of that. Alright. Here we go. Oof. Quick shotting me from that far range. It's madness. Now that range is far more practical, and I, uh, yeah, expected him to get some sort of benefit and to hit me. Here he comes charging forward. Alright. Let's go ahead and, uh, produce the cure axe. Sweet. Alright. Time to get serious here. You. Keep napping. Let's see, where's Anna here? Sweet. Flank. Sweet. Now, let's go ahead and uh, push forward this guy. Well, with Rita here. Finish him off. Finish him off. Nice. That's another two down. We're all standing strong here. Don't quite have the range to rush forward uh, so amazingly well. I do have some range. I kind of blocked off Isabella from taking the fastest route. That's fine. Daniela thankfully has such amazing speed that she can quickly catch back up to the fray. That extra maneuverability is really helpful, and Pedro can hide back here, behind the mass of halberds. This music. Alright, that's fine. Look, I'm taking this girl, whether you like it or not, you little bastards. And I'm actually not going to use lanterns for this one because I kind of don't want to set fire in my way. You, you understand how it goes, right? Alright, you actually... Eh. Oh, we, we can make something out of this. Can you guys actually reach? No. You can, though. Okay. See if I can do something to him. 
something meaningful and long lasting. Ah, uh, well, that could have gone better. Maybe I'll be able to finish the job with a rain shot. Rita! Go ahead and give it a spin. 41%. Damn it! It's alright, it's alright, it's alright. It's alright. No need for concern. 44% from you, Bernardo? Yes! Good job. Good job. Alright. A bunch of trappers in the way here. I uh, definitely did think this would be more dangerous than what it ended up being. And I am I'm glad that things did not go so horribly for me. <laughs> for understandable reasons. I would like to use a cure here. We need to provide some coverage. I'll just go ahead and do a faint. She will be our forward most individual here. There'll be some flanking potential, though, on her. I don't think the other trapper would run up for that, though. Think being the operative word. We're not doing a great job of establishing positive relationships with the natives on account of taking this girl with us, but, you know, things, they happened. <laughs> Nice shot there, with that blowgun. Damn. Yeah. Alright. What are you doing? Gotta run up and shoot Anna, huh? Alright, that's fine. Didn't do a great job of it, though. Okay. Rita, go ahead and rush up here. See if we can finish this guy off fast. Fantastic. That is what I am talking about, sir. You have not used that ability recently, so... Let's go ahead and move you forward. And faint. I mean, yeah, sure. Escape zone's there, but that's not big enough for everyone. It's not big enough for everyone. Oh, close. Let's go ahead and move Bernardo forward here. Ah, cover. Damn it. Ebbs. One, two, three, four, five. He can stand there. And Isabella can get a better angle on him. Maybe we can finish him off too. 42%. Yes! This is awesome! We're kicking ass! I'm kicking ass! I, I really worry that I'd overstep my bounds here. And perhaps there'll be tons of traps that I'll run into that'll kill us all. <laughs> that actually is a concern right now that I thought about it. <laughs> Worried about that. Besides, I uh, don't need to charge so far ahead so crazily anyway. I need some time for these guys to catch up, right? I, I can't reach anyway. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, and then 2, 4, 6, 8. Wouldn't be able to reach flawlessly. Now, 2, 4, 6, and then 2, 4, 6, 8. Okay, we'll do that then. Go ahead and spot traps, just to make sure... Alright, I, you know, maybe this particular avenue did have traps placed within it, and I didn't want to bite off more than I could chew. Alright, Bernardo. Let it rip. Damn it. Alright. Isabella. Let loose. 39%. You can just double move. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get ourselves in position here. The scouts leading the way. Really enjoying these scouts. 
Rita there will follow up behind, and uh, Pedro will do his damnedest to stay out of harm's way. Because of how useful he is, you know? Don't want anything bad happening to him. We've exposed ourselves more towards uh, risk. There's only four of them left, though. We have one of them engaged the melee now. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. Oh good, you're shooting at Daniela. I presume because Anna there had full cover. No matter speaking. Alright. I can actually take another shot here with Bernardo. 65 damage. You're the one who can reach. Let's, uh, let's see if I can weaken him here. Maybe not with Bernardo, but with Isabella. Let's get a little bit closer. 40%. Damn. Nice try, Grimoth. I just wanted to save some movement. Like, that way I wouldn't have to use Anna to deal with him. Oh well. That way I could continue to just rush forward. Well, might get lucky here. It's been known to happen. Not this time, though. But it's definitely been known to happen in this map. Alright. Let's just go ahead and finish him off, then. Don't have to deal with his sass. Okay. Engage. Can I rotate myself? Eight spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Close, but not good enough. Of course, I could just use sneak. That will suffice. Hello. That's a warrior. That's a trapper. That's another trapper. Okay. That's everyone taken care of. Go ahead and engage these folks in a melee situation with sword and board. Oof. That's why we got Pedro. The Pedro man. Alright, Rita. Bye. Well, no. Before you do that... Well, before you do that... Sneak around, be super sneaky. Actually, I don't think we have to worry about stunning him. Ah, eh, hell with it. Let's kick his ass. Good. Good, good, good. Of course, Reed is in my damn way now. Well, what can you do? Things happen. Charge with Bernardo. We will get everyone to an escape zone, damn it. Okay. Sword and boards. Oh hell, Daniela even hasn't even used her turn yet. It's beautiful. Sneak. Here we go. Like a so. No escape for you. We're taking this. We're taking this girl with us. She's ours. She wants to break free. Hmm. Heal her up. And again, you've done great work, Pedro. Absolutely fantastic work. I like your movies. Okay. Now, I actually do want to take care of this trapper here. That way, Daniela can move forward and faint. To block this trapper's avenue of escape. Whee! Alright. You can't reach. So... 
What I'm gonna have you do is stand here. See if we can get a shot off. Nice. Means that Bernardo should be able to finish the job here. Great. Flawless victory. Didn't even have to worry about moving everyone to an escape zone. To hell with your mission objective. Proud followers of gain morale, so have the aggressive ones, but the peaceful ones, not so much. Instead of simply making your escape, your stubbornness kicks in and you order your troops. We got the achievement unlocked fleet footed. What does that do? Achieve a flawless victory in an escape battle. <laughs> there you go. Instead of simply making your escape, your stubbornness kicks in and you order your troops to stand and fight. They look at you like you're mad, but they do as you command. When the battle is finally over, the jungle floor is littered with your pursuers, half of them unconscious, the other half writhing in pain. Anna is cowering behind your carts, looking absolutely horrified. I mean... Why not just try to chase after them, right? Make sure they'll live. Anna seems to calm down a little as you give the order to make sure the survivors will be alright. Not all of them are going to get out of this without some permanent injuries, but once you're ready to leave, you're fairly sure none of them will die. Wow. We gained a lot of morale there, too. Diplomatic Axe Asset. Recruit Anna Ka Kauna for your expedition. Having thus seen you from a more compassionate side, Anna jumps onto one of your carts and settles down on some sacks in a corner, wondering if she made the right choice in journey. <laughs> Oh, man. That's great that there's some special text there for, you know, standing your ground and fight. But although we didn't stand and fight, they were in the way of our escape route. Oh, man. I know, she's cowering behind the cards looking absolutely horrified. But hey, you know, we spared some lives and a lot of people gained morale. We balanced out the peaceful followers losing morale. And uh, then, uh... Bunch of people gained morale on top of that. I call that a victory. This video also dragged on for a very long time. A very long time. How long? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Was that 50 minutes at least? Well, we have a new expedition member now. Here she is, up here at the top. Civilian. Plus two to diplomacy, higher than average starting skills, but very weak combat unit. I see. Peaceful, altruistic, and adventurous. The daughter of the Totonac chief, Tepi. Anna is a friendly... I have two Annas now, yes. Friendly and adventurous and somewhat hyperactive young girl, burdened with a privileged but bored upbringing. As the daughter of a local chieftain, she is a considerable diplomatic asset, and it helps that her Spanish is impeccable. Oh. Oh, nice. Nice! Give her a hat. And she'll have a knife. So she's a civilian, so she's not really going to be assisting us in combat. The average morale is enthusiastic. I've made people feel better! Tiana, we're going to need to have a talk, honey. <laughs> I'll see you all next time.